You're listening to the Moose and the Loose, your 10 minutes action packed financial podcast with your host, Mikey Hu. Hey, what's up, Market Moose? Mike from the Moose on the Loose. I hope you are doing well on this Wednesday. Uh, today, we are leaving the world of stock market to go into the world of retirement planning. Uh, I'm doing a lot of financial projections for clan these days, and I thought, you know what? Let's share some thoughts on how you can affect your retirement with those three major factors. So there are like three things you can play with that will make a world of difference. And I know a lot of people are thinking, yeah, should I take CPP and OAS at 66 or 68 or 70 instead of 65? What's going to be the impact? And and most of the time, I mean, first, the sweet spot is around 67, 68, because when you consider uh, the bonus you get to delay it for a few years, but you also consider your life expectancy, the Pretty much sweet spot is around there where you can maximize it. But of course, if you live until the age of 100, well, if you take it at 70, you got more money. But if you take it at 70 and you pass at 75, well, you're not necessarily a winner. But this is a huge debate when it only affects like a few hundred bucks, maybe like a thousand dollar a year in your retirement budget for the next 30 years. So yes, it's interesting, but there are factors that are a lot more powerful. The first one is obviously, when will you retire? So the longer you wait, the more money you put aside and the less like amount of years that you need to finance with your retirement. So of course, it makes a big difference. If you want to retire earlier like than 65, around like 60, well, you need to put a lot more money there uh, for two things. The first one is you will not be investing more capital between the age of 60 and 65 and you will be withdrawing so it's a double dip on the wrong side so like your mother told you double dipping is not necessarily good well there you go you should not double dip this time so if you want to retire at 60 or 55 you need to put a lot more money aside the second thing that is that goes along with when you will retire is how much do you need and that is a very touchy question because if you retire at 55 chances are you're going to be super healthy you will have like tons of projects and you will want to spend a lot of money but if you spend a lot of money first that money will not compound in the future so it will affect big time how much you will have in 20, 25 years from now. And if you retire to, at 55, well, 25 years from now, you're 75. Chances are you're going to live until the age of what? Like 85, 90, maybe 95. So you still have a long way. So how much you need? Uh, rule of thumb, usually 70% of what you spend in your active lifestyle, but it really depends a lot more about what you envision to do in your retirement. Um, I had clients, uh, I remember like one of them, uh, when I was a financial planner, he needed like $2,000 a month to retire because he had no debt and what he enjoyed doing was ski, like snowboarding in the winter and then uh, just playing music in the summer. And he was like, you know what? I'm super happy with that. I'm living frugally and I don't need anything else. So, there you go. That guy needs like $50,000 maximum to cover every, every, everything, and then it will still be good. Some others will say, well, I need a minimum of 75 or 100 because I like to go on cruises. I like to go to nice restaurants. I would like to give gift to my children and grandchildren, like maybe sponsor their RESP and so on. So you need to factor that in. And the more you spend at the beginning of your retirement, the more it has an impact on the longevity of your portfolio. So you also have to consider this, which is super important. And do not make the mistake of dropping your but your retirement budget drastically once you pay past the age of like 75 or 80, thinking, oh, I will not be going on a cruise or I will not be spending that much. I'm gonna like sit tight, read books and enjoy like just the, the scenery. Well, that's wrong. I mean, first, you may be more active than you thought. So maybe you're going to continue to spend more money until the age of 80. And the other thing is, 
in many, many cases, a big part of what I call the fun money. So the money that you use for activities, for restaurants, for traveling, that's going to go into healthcare money. So to pay for a nurse that comes to your house like once uh, once a week, to pay to uh, like make some home renovation so you can stay there for a longer time or to simply move into a senior home where you would like to have like a lot of services, but those services are not cheap. So again, if you plan on like, I don't know, like let's put out a number. You plan on spending like $70,000 a year at retirement, Chances are you're not going to spend a lot less than that when you reach 75, 80. Maybe it's going to drop to 65 or 60, but not much more or much lower than this. The other thing you have to factor in is the inflation, of course. So, so far we have discussed when you will retire. So the longer you wait, the better it is. But I mean, you can also work part time. It's going to make a huge difference. But just thinking the younger you retire, the more you're going to spend and the less you're going to have time to save money. So you have to crank up your saving big time. How much you need? Well, chances are you will have a lot of projects in the first years, but the sequence of withdrawals will affect your retirement. So you have to uh, plan accordingly, especially if you want to help your children while you're a younger retiree. You want to give them some money to help them buy a house or something like that. But And do not make the mistakes of counting that you will not spend much once you grow older at 75 or 80. You may still be active and cost of senior homes and healthcare money is quite expensive. Last, but certainly not the least, because it has a huge impact in those financial projections when you think about 20, 30, 40 years. And then you're going to tell me again, but Mike, I'm 65. I don't care about 40 years. Okay, that's fine. Probably you're not going to live until the age of 105, but you may live to 95 or 90. So you still have like more than 20 years in front of you and compounding will have a huge impact. So there is a big difference between risk and volatility and how you invest your money will make a huge impact on how you can spend it as well. So the third aspect is the the asset and sector allocation, depending on how much you want to generate. So right now, you may feel very comfortable investing in GICs and, and short-term bonds because they offer you like 4 or 5% and it's guaranteed. So that's a great feeling. But over time, over the next 20, 25 years, do you really think that you'll be able to compound that 5% year after year? I don't think so. Uh, already we're talking about interest rate cuts for uh, the second half of 24. And if this happens, well, already the 5% will disappear. Maybe it's going to go down to a 4%, maybe a 35 And then it's a little bit of a different story, right? So going for stocks for a portion of your portfolio into equities, yes, it will increase the volatility. So it, that means that your portfolio will have larger movement. So go up, go down. Maybe it's going to give you some headaches. But if you understand what you're doing, the other thing is actually your portfolio will be safer. So more volatility, but less risk, less risk of surviving your portfolio. Because if you invest everything at 3.5%, of course, no volatility at all. But maybe there's a high risk that you will spend all your money. And at one point, you're going to wake up, you're going to have like $45,000 left in your portfolio, and you'll be 82. And then you're going to think to yourself, well, I cannot really just count on CPP and OAS to uh, live in a senior home that, of my choice. And you will like see your options reduce. And this is not something you want once you age. So having more equity in your portfolio will increase your volatility. So it's important that you understand that and that you feel good about market movements. But if you are able to weather those storms, it will actually be a lot safer to have some equities in your portfolio. Of course, that depends on each person. And as you can see, you can play with the moment you're going to retire. You can play with your budget now and later on and in your retirement life. And you can also play around with your asset and sector allocation. There are no like good answers here. Like it really depends on your situation and what how you envision your retirement. On my part, 
you know that already, I will still be 100% invested in equities. Once I age, even at 85, then I'm going to think about my portfolio to leave it as a legacy to my children and my grandchildren. So I'm still going to have that same 40, 50 years investment horizon mentality. That's not going to change. But that's just me. And Every single person is different. What is important is you understand your strategy and that you are comfortable with it. So, all right, Moose, I hope that you have enjoyed this one. Uh, a little... Um Cap a, a, a little uh, podcast on retirement. Uh, tomorrow, we are going back into the world of investing. And until then, don't forget to stay invested. Hey, welcome to Disclaimer. If you're listening to The Moose and the Loose, you cannot really expect me to give you buy or sell recommendation or financial advice, right? You're here for fun, you're here for information and some entertainment. But I am not your financial advisor, I am not your broker, so therefore I'm not liable if you're losing money after listening to the podcast. If you're looking for some advice, go see a professional. If not, you can enjoy the show and do your due diligence after it.